Multi-bandpass filters are becoming increasingly more popular these days for color images. And with more variety out there than before, I'm gonna have a look at Altair's offering on this market, the tri-band filter. So let's get going. How's it going everybody? It's Rosie here for Astrophotography. If you want reviews, how-tos and imaging vlogs for all things astrophotography, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload. So as already mentioned, these filters are extremely popular these days, and for good reason. Narrowband imaging, especially hydrogen alpha for example, is extremely powerful for people living in light pollution, which is most of us, and for use on like emission nebulae and things like that. The issue is using just a hydrogen alpha filter, for example, isn't optimum with color sensors as it only lets through one red pixel on the Bayer matrix, which means lower signal to noise ratio, which means poorer resolution, yada, 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 you get the idea. A way around this is to use multiple bandpass filters. Now, traditionally, these are let through hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. So the hydrogen alpha activates the red pixel and the oxygen three, which is more on the cyan part of the color spectrum, lets through activates the green and blue pixels. The tri-band gets its name because it allows through triple band pass, so it lets through HA, O3, and hydrogen beta. And by extension, the Altair quad band allows through those three, as well as sulfur two. So, multi-band pass. The filter these days comes in two flavors for the tri-band and the quad band. They come in the two inch M48 threaded version like I've got here. And they've also recently, not too long ago, started a production line of clear pin filters for Canon EOS cameras. Now I got one of the first ones that they began releasing just to get some out in the wild. So it's actually in a Skytech L Pro Max filter ring, but you know what? Semantics. Oop, nearly dropped it. There's this fireworks. I'm sorry. I found a lot of success using this filter with my Hypercam 183C cool tech camera. So that was a cool dedicated color camera from Altair with the Altair filter. And I mainly used this in my Astro Imaging Challenge with Tim from Astro Addict and it worked really well there. I also turned this to the Western Veil Nebula, as well as the Eagle Nebula actually, M16 in the Eagle Nebula, and had decent results from it there as well. The transmission out of the gate was really good as well. I was using exposures of about three to four minutes long using telescopes of f4.6 and f6, and that was at unity gain of the 183C camera. And I never once felt like I really had to crank the exposure time up, like when I was using seven nanometer or 3.5 nanometer hydrogen alpha filters from beta, of course, I had to really crank those exposure times up. But due to the nature of this, and also the difference in band passes, it has to be said, I didn't have to really crank my times up. So that was a benefit actually. Speaking of transmission, the O3 and the HB lines on this have a transmission band pass of 35 nanometers and the hydrogen alpha is 12 nanometers. Now that's plenty of hydrogen alpha for a lot, hence why it was easier to use expo lower exposure times. But because it combines HA and the O3 together, O3 isn't very good at resisting moon glow, HA is, so because it combines both into one exposure, if you're only during a full moon, you're probably gonna see gradients in your image. Now you can either deliver that or use something like gradient exterminator, or if you can find a way of extracting the hydrogen alpha data, then just do that and you pluck the HA data out and work on that separately. Extracting the HA made editing photos taken with the dry band filter that much easier. Because I was splitting the HA and the O3 together, it's why I was actually able to get such a nice blue in my Tulip Nebula photo from that Astro Imaging Challenge. And if you wanna know how you can go about extracting the, the data, then my friend Stacy has a good tutorial about doing that with APP and I'll link that in the description below. Now, because nothing is perfect in this world, my biggest drawback I have with the tri-band filter are halos. So I saw halos around most stars, not even just the brightest ones, I saw them around modestly bright stars as well. And this wasn't just restricted to my data set either. I've seen uh, halos on other people's images that were taken with these multi-band pass filters. So let's zoom in on my Veil Nebula and my uh, Tulip Nebula photos and let's have a look. Here on the tulip, you can clearly see where there are some obvious halos around the stars. And the same applies for the Veil Nebula. Now, aside from my previous comment about seeing this with other people's setups, I remind you that I was using an Altair Hypercam 183C with an Altair Lightwave 0.8 times reducer, and that was 55 millimeters away from the sensor using Altair T2 extensions. The only thing that wasn't Altair was the telescope. 
The telescope was a Skywatcher. However, I've used the Skytech L Pro Max filter on the exactly same setup and never observed any halos appearing. So I can only conclude that it's coming from the filter. The final points to talk about are the build quality. The build quality is very nice, what you expect from a good brand like Altair. And the coating seems applied nicely. Um, that seems like it's picking at straws. Unlike my beta filter, if you screw this into the reducer flattener, when I had my beta seven nanometer, when I screwed it into the reducer flattener, it would really latch itself in and it would be a nightmare to try and get off. The Altair filter doesn't do that. It screws on all the way and it will come off easily as well. It's got some pretty generic packaging, just shows you the band passes that you expect. However, the green is a nice touch to differentiate it. Uh, like I already mentioned, the, the coating is coming off of my case, but this is because it's an early model. Um, this was, like I said before, the full proper production line. And the L-Pro on my filter ring has just been sharpied out. But again, early models, and that's not the, what you'll expect to get these days. Nowadays, or be in their own proper tri-band rings with proper boxes as well. So don't let this dissuade you. I just want to bring attention to it in case you've noticed and was wondering what was going on. In summary, if you concede that you might get some halos around stars, because apparently it's different for different sensor sizes, different sensor distances, etc., like that. If you're happy that you might get some halos, then the tri-band filter is a really good tool to have, especially for when you're imaging emission nebula. And it will, to some extent, allow you to image through the full moon period or moon periods, especially if you can extract that hydrogen alpha data. Now you'd go for the tri-band filter if you're on Bortle 5 plus, and you'd go for the quad band if you're in Bortle 4 less. I've even seen some promising results for people using DSLRs. Now, when I tried to use it with the DSLR, I absolutely cooked my sensor and it wasn't really good and I had no good data from it. So it wasn't a good example of using this data, this filter with a DSLR. But I saw a really nice Western Veil Nebula that was using a tri-band filter through a large Newtonian and a DSLR, and it looked amazing. However, like I already said though, I can vouch for using it with a dedicated OSC camera was brilliant. It had really good results from it, really great results, barring the halos, which you might be able to edit out, but that's what it was designed for, one-shot color cameras. So, however, whilst it was designed for one-shot color cameras, Altair on the website state that it can be used as a super luminance layer when using a mono camera. Now I had a mono camera for a tiny little period of time. So whilst these filters were designed for use with OSC cameras, that's what they excel at, that's what they were made for, Altair state on their website that you can use them as a super luminance layer on mono images. Now I had a mono camera for a little bit, but I never got around to doing it. Um, and then I don't have the mono camera anymore, so I can't, can't do it. That's just the way it goes. I didn't like mono. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped your research. If you're looking at buying an Altair tri-band filter, if you are interested in one, let me know in the comments below. Ask any questions you may have and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Do you have an Altair tri-band filter or a quad-band filter? What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you have halos? And if you have halos, how do you get around it? Do you know how to edit them out? If you do, please let me know in the comments below because I'd like to continue using this filter, but I may not because of the halo issue, but we'll see. They're always learning. Again, thanks very much for watching. Hope you have a great day, clear skies, and keep on looking up and keep them cameras clicking. See you next time. Bye-bye. These fireworks though.